that's a sensitive issue. I, as the uh, Mission Bay Koei Residents Association, we handle submissions on a range of issues. And one of the ones which has actually just closed quite recently is the new bus network. And one of the things that we've complained about in that, in <coughs> fact, is that the number of bus routes through our suburbs has been severely reduced. <laughs> so one part of council is saying, hey, you don't need the bus routes. Another part of council is saying, well, because you've got those bus routes, or at least you did the last time we looked, we're going to intensify your suburbs. <laughs> I, I just, you know, the council has many different arms, but there has to be a mechanism to get them coordinated. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, to, to Don and all your team, so I know that everyone wanted to have a say, um, but we're trying to, you know, sort of fit this in within a reasonable time frame. So thanks very much. It's great Brilliant. to see you all. Appreciate Brilliant. the Thank chance. You. Okay, um, Ryan, please. They do, it's very warm in here. Could we turn the air conditioning up, Mr. Chief? Or open On those as high as we can go. Okay. Mm. What's that? <laughs> 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 I don't know why they just can't this is in the kitchen. Yeah, it doesn't probably need a little bit more air in. And we've got a bit more um, ceiling room. Uh, Ryan, sorry. Oh, no, it's Ryan. Suds, how are you? I'm good, thank you. You're right. Okay, okay. so, um, <laughs> so there you're going to uh, present to us on behalf of Gen Zero. Yay. Oh. Yeah, thanks so much for the opportunity to be here and, and lovely to see such passionate discussion around the future of our city. Uh, it's a very important concern to all of us. Can I just say it's incredibly hot in this room? I've been, um, yeah, mate. I've been outside in the overflow, and I think that's actually an appropriate place to start because I feel I'm here representing people who are outside this room, and that is uh, the very diverse, youthful city that we've got and the city that's going to be growing in the future. And I'd like to remind Council that we're talking here about a 30-year plan a 30-year plan that is enabling where we can develop in the future to cater for a growing population and a population that's seeking different things than what Auckland has currently. The quarter-acre dream is frankly gone. It is not practical. It is not affordable. Young people are willing to compromise. We're willing to compromise by downsizing <laughs> to living in smaller kind of dwellings. We're, we're very happy living in apartments and terraced housing but we'd like to live close to where we study, close to where we work. And that is why it is so essential that the unitary plan provides the capacity for mixed housing in the inner suburbs of Auckland. That's why it'll be incredibly disappointing if today you remove the ladder out of your own submission, because essentially you'll be pulling the ladder for the chance for young people to afford to live in the city. Uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, come on, you guys. Everyone listens to everyone here. Just exactly. please abide. How rude. Uh, it's, 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 it's fantastic to hear this, this level of passion. I really, really appreciate it. And it's great that this has been recorded as well um, in the interests yeah. of, of getting your meetings out into the community, which I think is, is really important. And I'd like to really emphasize everything that the Youth Advisory Panel have said before me. And they represent, as they mentioned, uh, young people from all around the region, and they unanimously call for density done well. And I'd like to see people's passion channeled to the right areas here. I think we can all agree that in the past, there's been some pretty ugly stuff go up around Auckland. But this is not about that. This is about an aspirational future. And let's have a discussion together with the people behind me and with yourselves around quality and design. And let's, let's, let's really channel our passion into that, because I think what people are concerned about here is bad quality, and that's what we're concerned about as well. But that is not what zoning determines. There are broader discussions there around the building code and the quality of our design culture and engaging with the architecture community as well. So let's, let's really have that conversation as well. Um, and just briefly, I think it's very important that we, we stick to facts, and some of the facts are that the the fastest growing type of household in Auckland are, are people living alone. That in a few years' time, there will be more families living without children in Auckland than families with children. So these 
kind of household do not need the space of a detached house with a backyard. That's why it's so imperative that the unitary plan provides for mixed housing in the inner suburbs of Auckland. Now this is mixed housing. It's not something that's new. Let's not get afraid. Let's just all take a deep breath. We're wanting you guys to allow us to build places like Ponsonby, Freeman's Bay, Greylin again, because currently we're not able to do that because of setbacks and density controls. And I don't think anyone's afraid of what they see on the slide here. And that's what we're calling for. Terraced houses designed well in keeping with the character of the neighborhood. That's what the unitary plan can enable, and that's what your current submission does. I also just want to reiterate how modest the changes are in your submission. I mean, close to 80% of Auckland under your submission is still going to be zoned single housing. So we're not exactly talking about tower blocks going up overnight here at all. Um, now, this has been a long day. There's been a number of speakers before me, so I think uh, we can keep it relatively brief. But I just want to really emphasize that you're dealing with a long-term process here. Trends are changing in our society, and we really want this plan to represent the views of all Aucklanders from all around our diversity, and that's your responsibility here today. Thanks very much. Well answered. Goodness. Uh, okay, uh, questions to uh, Dr. Sud. Yes. Councillor Christine. In 1999, along with Penny Parrott, we tried to introduce in Auckland <coughs> City livable communities, which was about intensification, it was about public transport, and a lot of those things that Generation Zero have actually been articulating for some time. What we learned was unless you take the community with you, change is very difficult to implement. Are you willing to recognise that, for me, as someone who supports intensification, it's really imperative that you take the community with you on controversial decisions? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, Councillor, and, and I'd like to applaud your leadership on this issue, and uh, thank you for opening Brudamart as well. Much appreciated. Um, but uh, I agree. But I think we need to define community here. And we can't just define community based on who turns up to meetings in the eastern suburbs. Uh, we have a very broad community. Many people cannot attend these meetings because they're working double shifts to pay the rent because they can't afford to live in the city. And that's what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with a process of a democratic deficit where people who are working their butts off to pay the rent cannot attend and engage, and that's your responsibility as a council to take their perspective as well. So my supplementary to that question, in terms of the responsibility of me as a councillor, how do you feel that on an issue as important as this, I was denied my democratic right to have a vote? Oh, hang on. Um, look, uh, one, Councillor, Councillor Fletcher, I mean, look, Dr. Soot doesn't know anything about the democratic well, arrangements in the show. I will pose my question. <laughs> look, no, oh, these, oh, no, stop, 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 no, so, so, I'm going to rule it all. Yeah. I mean, he can't my reply to that. My question is There'd about... There'd be no one here who could reply to that, so no, that's not a question. I just need him to know that I was not a member and... Yep. Was you unable. just wanted to make a speech, so no, thank you. No, I'm not making a speech. I was a not a member Come of on. the unitary uh, plan commission. You have a chance to, shh, shh, shh. You Come have on. chance to be a member. Sure, but this is, this is a I, hear, I hear what you're saying. This is a very tense issue. But we've been doing this for four years now, and there's an <laughs> urgent shortage of housing. There are people struggling in our community. And the longer we delay and appeal, and I mean, today we're concerned about the process, but there's been excuses for not wanting intensification for many years now. Today it's process. Yesterday it was setbacks. Before that it was view shafts. And we just need to get on with it. Okay. Question was asked now. Okay. Uh, so question was asked now. Uh, do we have two questions? We have one. Is there another question? No. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Dr. Sid, great to see you. Thank you very much and all the best. Right. Uh, final speaker uh, or speakers, uh, Julie Stott and David Gibbs from the... New Zealand Institute of Architects and Urban Auckland. Good to see you guys. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And thank you for your good work on the port study. God. Your Worship and thank Councillors, you, Worship. my name's David Gibbs. I've been an architect in, in Auckland for 40 years. I'm going to talk a little bit about 
uh, the, the capacity issues that other speakers have alluded to. Uh, Julie is going to talk on the process, the, the thing that concerns a lot of people here. So the, um, for the last 33 months, I've managed on a voluntary basis the participation of three groups in the unitary plan. Those groups are the uh, New Zealand Institute of Architects, the Urban Design Forum, and Generation Zero. And Generation Zero, of course, you've just heard from, they, and have spoken very eloquently for themselves. The, um, all three groups are absolutely united in asking Council to hold to their position on the upzoning of the, um, the unitary plan. We see it as absolutely essential. We, we understand the, the difficulty of the decisions that are facing you, but we think there is really no solutions. There is no, uh, there's really no uh, other course. Our message is simple. Yes, the process has bit, could have been handled better, we are, and, and I think probably there's, there's people in council that would say that, but some, and some citizens are aggrieved, but there is a crisis in Auckland directly related. There's a crisis in Auckland directly related to the unitary plan that isn't a crisis of property rights. It's a crisis of not nearly enough houses for our population right now. In the view of our three organisations, that crisis trumps the procedural shortcomings of the process. I, um, I heard laughter at uh, Sudva's um, <coughs> description of pulling the ladder up um, after the property owners pulling the ladder up. I can't think of a more potent <laughs> symbol. Oh. I, re I read it in a uh, co young correspondence. Uh, letter, a uh, uh, piece in the Herald last week, and I thought it really captures exactly the attitude of many in the room today, and I feel that that's really unfortunate. There needs to be, there needs to be a lot less self-interest and more tolerance and, ge and generosity in this debate. We simp Order, please. Order. Just we can't afford quiet. to prioritise the hurt feelings of some pro property owners at the expense of those who are losing hope to ever get on the property, uh, to be property owners. For about a year, I've been part of the experts group that Richard Burton spoke of um, earlier, um, tasked by the unitary plan hearings panel with advising them on the likely demand for housing and on what supply can be expected from the unitary plan. The group makes a very clear distinction between what the plan enables. The plan enables huge numbers of dwellings, and therein lies a big confusion with what uh, councillors and others have been hearing. The plan enables a huge amount. The distinction that our group made was to look very carefully at what developable capacity, that is what uh, is likely to happen uh, that is feasible, and the difference between those figures is absolutely vast. The tool that Council and the experts have developed is powerful, and it is poised to run the new zoning, the new spatial maps. Critically, it has not done that. Nobody in this room, nobody, Dr. Fairgray, Council, do not know right now what the consequence of the spatial zoning is when run through that machine. There has been trouble with, with the commissioning of it on, in, in times. What I need to say to you is that, um, so we, we don't know whether we're closing on, in on the gap of the 240 to 280,000 needed by 2041. The other misconception that has been cast is doc that Dr. Fairgray is saying there's ample capacity. Dr. Fairgray is reporting on a different, a different time frame than 2041. That's the nominal 30 years that we all keep talking about. Dr. Fairgray, in evidence, has said that he thinks that the uh, that there is sufficient capacity for the next 10 years, which he thinks is okay because that is, in his terms, the life of the plan. That is not what the unitary plan set out to do. It set out in absolute black and white terms to produce 240,000 to 280,000 houses by 2041. When we, when the group 
that I'm part of looked at this issue, um, there, 